Hey everybody, uh, today I'm going to go through how I did this stack text, how I designed the file, and I'm also going to cover how I made this sign behind me with just raised text, so these were all cut out separately using DAOs for registration. Um, this is walnut and bird's eye maple. You can use, of course, whatever lumber that you'd like. For the um, design itself, instead of having the Frank's Wood Products, which are, if you're in Maryland, check out Frank. He's in Loveville, Maryland, Frank's Wood Products. Um, the Spark Robotic sign that I have here, this will actually be a home sweet home sign. Unless you'd like to duplicate this um, Spark Robotic sign, be cool to have some of their swag in your shop. So I'm sure they'd really appreciate that. Uh, nonetheless, I glued this up just like we would a cutting board. So face grain to face grain. I'm at about an inch and a quarter now. Um, my pocket is right at 0 .40 and then my each of my text is 0 .2. Of course, you can make that whatever you want. This is a curly maple blank. Purple heart is the, um, the spark and then the upper robotics is in curly maple. So stay tuned. I've got the file that I've generated for the welcome sign and the home sweet home. That'll be in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching. All right, so we'll start with this um, welcome text with the dowels as far as the placement on your work. You don't necessarily have to just use this for text. You can use this for anything if you wanted to. Um, in other words, maybe put some like L pieces of, of trim or, or whatever else. You can use the same idea here. Um, even for like jig placement on your spoil board, you can use the same premise for that. So what I did is I just have the word welcome written out. I've got uh, quarter inch holes, quarter inch circles that are placed on the letters. Um, the, the sign that I did shown in the video, I used eighth inch holes for that and just use kitchen skewers. They're an eighth of an inch. So um, quarter inch here, but you can even use eighth inch. The batten, um, the batted border, whatever we want to call this, I just use an eighth inch end mill and um, a V-carve bit to clean this out, but you don't even have to use this design if you don't want to. So with um, our text written out and then our location for our dowels placed, we're just going to hold shift and highlight both of these, and we're going to copy these to a new sheet, and I've got it labeled letter cutout. And then what we want to do is we want to cut these letters out in reverse. So to do that, we're just going to highlight everything again, come over to mirror selected objects, and we're just going to flip horizontal. Now that that's done, we'll just straighten this up a little bit. Now what we want to do is we want to convert this to curves, our text to curves, so we'll be able to move that and then ungroup our Dow locations that we made. And then we can come in and group each letter with the Dow location so we can place it on our piece, whatever we're going to cut out. So this is as simple as it can be when it comes to not using any kind of nails and things like that to, you know, make your signs. So what we'll do, the last thing we'll do is we'll come back to our original sheet and just delete the word welcome. And the most important thing at this point is if you mess up and move these whole locations around, you won't have that proper registration for your um, text to go back. So after this, um, you know, you put your work on the machine, cut your cut your dowel holes, and then, like I said, these letters get cut in reverse. I cut the dowels first, the hole locations first, and another recommendation is tabs. So put your tabs where, you know, it's going to be easier for you to sand. And what I did on mine is I did a final last pass at like 10 thousandths or so just to clean them up. So with the dowels, I have those obviously in the back side of the letters that I cut out. And mine, I, they were eighth inch, um, and you can use kitchen skewers. That's what I had. So 
just a little CA glue and you can see by the the intro that you're perfectly spaced with um, the dowels is registration there's no nail holes or anything like that and just a lot cleaner Jumping into the stacked text, the first thing I did, of course, is I've got my project size. I've got the total size of this sign at 21 and a half by eight. And then my inside vector is at 19 by six. And what I did to get to this point is I glued up um, face grain to face grain as if you were making a cutting board. I just didn't do the end grain part of that. So I made this overall, I was at a inch and a quarter thick. So to get started, the first thing I did is just created home, had a text and got it relatively, you know, sized in the inside vector where I wanted it. And for those that don't know, you can actually make this a little bit bigger on your text by just clicking bold. And you can also make it italic if you wanted. So um, those features are also there. Then I found some script for sweet home. The first thing we want to do with the sweet home portion is we need to clean out these overlaps. So we're going to highlight and convert to curves. And what this does is ungroups your text. So you can actually take each letter and move that where you want to. But we're going to take our trim tool and go in each vector and clean this out. Go over here to home and get this done. And if you make a mistake at any of this point, control Z will undo the last action that you took. So we're just gonna scroll over here um, and everything now is ungrouped. So what we wanna do is highlight all of this, group it together, and that's where I'm at with this layer here. So I'm going to delete this. We don't need it. Um, get rid of that. And what we wanted to do is with Sweet Home, this is going to be our upper text that's going to be layered on top of Home. We want to have that highlighted and this highlighted, and we just want to move or copy this rather to another layer, which I've already done, and I've labeled it upper text. And I'll explain more of that as we move on. But now from this point, home needs to be converted to curves, and then it needs to be grouped. So at this point, sweet home has been converted to curves, it's been grouped, and home as well. So holding shift, we're gonna highlight home, and then we're gonna go over here to where it says weld selected vectors, and click that icon. And now what it's done is it's taken all of the overlaps out and it's created a vector that we need to group that will be used as our base for our text. So from this point, this is how we do our stack text. It's, it's this simple. If we come back up to our upper text and click it on, you can see what the software did. So now I'm going to move in to um, how I did the inlay part of it. So feel free if, if this is the part of this that you wanted to get wrapped around, then you're here. But for the inlay, what I did is just click on this inside vector. We're going to see what size this is. Um, 17 and a half by four. So let's make um, a box that's 18 by four and a half. Go 18, 4.5, just drop that over there. And I did a radius external of 3 8 of an inch because that's the, the cutter that I'm using. And we're just going to align objects. So 
we can see we captured all of that text there. So now with this is we're going to move this to a sheet and we're going to make this base inlay. And before I do that, control Z again, we're actually going to move this to a layer first, a new layer, and we're going to call this base inlay pocket. And now we're going to copy this to our base inlay sheet. So the way that this is going to work is we're going to cut this pocket first at a depth of 0.4 is what I used. That's going to be our pocket. And then this sheet is going to be the inlay that's going to slip inside of that pocket. So we're going to turn this base inlay pocket off. And we're going to turn our stack text design off and then go back to our upper text. And we need to create a boundary box around Sweet Home. And we're gonna do the same thing here. Um, so 16 and a half, we'll go 17 by two and a half. So 17 by 2.5, again, drop that over there. Um, 3 8 inch radius, we're gonna line that. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna to move to a different layer and we're going to call this our upper inlay pocket. And then we're also going to um, copy this to our upper inlay sheet, which is over here now. So before we move any further, I want to show this base inlay. If you're concerned about fitting this inlay over into your workpiece since we have um, a little bit of extra room if you come over to set selected object size and you go to a percentage you can increase this size by a percentage or decrease the size by a percentage so if we just do like 99.5 percent this will make that inlay just a little bit smaller and it'll slip right in here with no problem the same thing if we go to the um, upper inlay and I'll go ahead and do this just so it's it's done again this like I said it doesn't have to be precise with these inlays um, if you do want to practice with your machine you know to see how your machine does this is a, a good way to do that though so now we'll look at making some tool paths and I'm just going to turn all this back off and then turn our stack text design on and I've already got the tool paths generated, but I'm going to walk through the steps. Um, the first thing that we would want to do is our bottom inlay. So here's our bottom inlay here. And I've got that set, like I said, at 0.4. You want your male inlay that slips in to be a little bit thicker. So like half an inch, it makes it a lot easier to um, clamp that. So here's our bottom inlay, and let's just pretend that our bottom inlay has been glued in place. So now what we wanna do is go to our upper inlay. And I'm gonna turn this off. And our upper inlay, we're gonna cut this at a depth of 0.2, and the same thing as before. Your male inlay to slip into this, you want that to be like 3 8 of an inch, half an inch, it doesn't matter, um, just so it's easier to clamp. And then let's preview these two. Okay, so it did do both of those. So what we'd be left with is after our first inlay is in place and glued, we would come back and cut this upper inlay. Now we can move on to how we're gonna cut the sign. So we're gonna reset preview. I'm going to turn this off. We're going to go back to our stack text design. And our first pocket that we're going to cut is going to be at a depth of 0.4. And we're going to use, I used anyway, a 3 8 inch end mill, quarter inch end mill, and eighth inch end mill to get in there tight. Um, ramp your plunge moves. And then we're going to hit calculate. 
Okay, so this is going to be our base layer. And if you remember how we converted the text to curves, this is where we're at right now. So you can see the outline of Sweet Home, but we need to raise that. So in order to do that, we're going to come back over and we're going to turn this stack text off and we're going to go to our upper text. And this is why we did that other sheet, I mean the other layer here. So with our upper pocket, I've got that cutting cut to a depth of 0.2, um, still the same end mills, 3 eighths, quarter inch, eighth inch. These are all Amana end mills. And as far as your cut direction, that's up to you. Um, you can do offset, you can do raster here. I like using raster just because um, it's going to go with the grain of the wood. And then we're just going to calculate that. And then we're going to preview those visible toolpaths. So this is what we're left with, with our stacked text. Um, you know, not hard to do. The hardest part, honestly, is just waiting for the glue to dry. Um, and one thing I will say, it's going to look like when you're cutting this that it's not working quite right because that upper inlay will still be, or the bottom inlay rather, will still be covered up at some point with this upper inlay until you cut that away. So just um, stay the course and it'll cut just fine. Um, with this done, this, this shows um, how this is all finished up. The other thing you can do though is while we're here, Say we wanted to do some texture because one thing you'll see is when you get to hogging this much material away that you'll have some wood movement and you'll it almost seems like your machine isn't trammed. So one way to kind of clean that up, and that's what I did on mine, is you have a texturing tool path here. And you can choose whatever bit that you want to use. I used a 3.6 degree end mill. And you want a boundary offset for your vector. So you want this tool to come outside this vector a little bit. If you don't, the tool will actually hit your vector. So we're going to offset this at like 0 0.08 and see how that does. And we want a start depth of 0.4 because that's where we were um, with our pocket. And then I just made a maximum depth cut of 0 0.08. And we'll just hit calculate. And I goof that up. So let's go back so I can do this right. We're going to reset preview. And for our texture, what I forgot to do is we want to pocket this. So we want to highlight our outside boundary and then our inside boundary and then hit calculate. Okay, that looks right. So now let's preview these tool paths. Um, I don't want that one. I don't want the upper or lower and preview visible tool paths. And there we are. That's our completed sign. Um, with the texture tool path, um, I did go in here and play around with these settings. You can change them if you want the angle of your um, texture. I've got it set at 15 degrees. You can set this to any angle that you want. But that's it in a nutshell. So covering um, text on text, the placement of the dowels if you wanted to do just a raised text sign, and then the texturing tool path. So hopefully this helps, and um, I appreciate everyone watching.